Hello. Um, I'm going to answer a really common question I get. Is it the phrenic or the vagus? Uh, what's happening here is we're looking at the anatomy in the neck. I've got a whole load of models here. And you see two nerves running down through the neck. How do you know which one is the phrenic and which one is the vagus? The secret is to see where it comes from, see where it goes to. But let's talk about how you can work out which is which. Excuse my background, I think it's tuned to doing catheterization and uh, phlebotomy practice in here tomorrow. Um, if you're asking, is it the phrenic or the vagus, then you already know about the phrenic and the vagus. Now you know that the phrenic nerve, C345, keeps the diaphragm alive, which means that the phrenic nerve comes from um, the cervical spinal cord, from cervical spinal nerve roots, right? And it's going to run down to the diaphragm. Um, and the vagus nerve, if you're asking this question, you know about the vagus nerve, you know that it's a cranial nerve, so it comes out of the brainstem, which means it's got to run from the brainstem, it leaves the cranial cavity through the jugular forum, and it's going to run down the neck with this artery and this vein and go to the chest. Then they both run through the chest and they take slightly different routes. Now the vagus nerve, the wanderer, um, it has a whole load of jobs, but one of its big jobs is it's going to carry parasympathetic innervation to the chest, so to the heart, and to the abdomen, so the gastrointestinal tract. So the vagus nerve then is going to go and find the esophagus when it gets into the chest. And then it'll, there'll be a vagus nerve on either side of the esophagus, and they'll descend. And that's how the vagus nerves get through the diaphragm, because the esophagus is going through the diaphragm, and the esophagus is part of the gastrointestinal tract, right? And then, bam, diaphragm, done. And you'll see as it goes past, well, it can give branches to the heart um, and the lungs and what have you. This is one of the problems with models. Models show different things. Actually, this is the problem with all things anatomy. Different things show different things. We have to take things away to show things. Anyway, what we see in the neck here, so we see the internal jugular vein and we see the common carotid artery, uh, which becomes the internal carotid artery. So the internal carotid artery, the internal jugular vein are gonna carry blood to and from the brain. Um, and the vagus nerve is gonna run with these two blood vessels. And down here it'll run, the vagus nerve will run with the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein. I was just in the prosection room earlier and we did exactly this and we could see the, the vagus nerve is running beautifully along with these two blood vessels. So the vagus nerve is running from the cranial cavity with these two blood vessels down the neck in between these two blood vessels. And in life, this is within the carotid sheath, the fascial tube. So if it's up here and it's running down here, it's the vagus nerve because the phrenic nerve hasn't even come out yet. Um, and then this is less use. Look, here's a scary model of the deep face. Scary because it's got so much detail on there. But here we can see the um, internal carotid artery and the common carotid artery. And there's a nerve running with the internal carotid artery and the common carotid artery. What is it? Is it the vagus? Is it the phrenic? Well, it's the vagus because we've just said that that's what it does, right? So, um, like I say, the trick is see where it comes from, see where it goes to. That's how you work out what things are if you have the luxury of being able to see lots of anatomies. Oh, here's another good one. Okay, so there's the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Let's take off sternocleidomastoid so we can see these nerves in the neck. Um, so we can see a vein, that'll be the internal jugular vein. We can see an artery, that'll be the common carotid artery. And we can see a nerve that's running down into the chest and if we follow it up, we can see that it's running with these two blood vessels. So a nerve running with these two blood vessels is running down into the chest. What is it? Is it the phrenic or the vagus? It's the vagus. But we can see a lot more nerves on here. So which one's the phrenic nerve? All right, phrenic nerve, C345, keeps the diaphragm alive. That means it comes out of the cervical spinal cord. That means it comes out from cervical spinal nerve roots. I know I said this earlier, but I like repetition. Um, here... There's the brachial plexus. Oh, the brachial plexus is also formed by cervical spinal nerve roots. The brachial plexus is also coming out of the cervical spinal cord, and it's really big and obvious. And oh, look, there's another nerve there that is coming out from the same place 
that we see the brachial plexus coming out from. We've got two muscles here. These are the scalene muscles. They're called the scalenes because they make a scalene triangle shape. And the brachial plexus is coming out from between the anterior and middle scalene muscles. The phrenic nerve is doing the same. When I'm dissecting and I get deep into the neck here, I find the anterior scalene muscle easily. And if I ever find a nerve that's on the anterior surface of the anterior scalene muscle, it's the phrenic nerve. And if I follow it back up, oh yeah, look, it's coming out of the cervical spinal cord. So here's a nerve here going down to the chest that's running with the two blood vessels. It runs all the way up to the brain. That's the vagus nerve. This nerve here is also running down into the chest. If I follow it back up again, it's coming out of the cervical spinal cord. It's the phrenic nerve. If we have a look at this model here, again, in the neck, what can we see? Ah. There's the brachial plexus, big obvious brachial plexus there coming out from between the two scalene muscles. What's this nerve here then? If I follow it back up, oh, it's coming out from between the two scalene muscles. C345 keeps the diaphragm alive. That must be the phrenic nerve. And look, it's on the anterior surface of the anterior scalene muscle. So it's the phrenic nerve and it's going down into the chest. Um, and there's no vagus nerve on there. What about this model here? Lovely model of the chest, loads of detail in here. No head, oh, that makes life harder. What can we see? Okay, we can see the brachial plexus there and it's coming out from between the two scalene muscles. Oh, and then we can see two nerves here and there, both going down into the chest. How do we know which is the phrenic, which is the vagus? Oh, well, right. Um, we can't follow them up, can we? So we're kind of guessing. This nerve looks like it's running with the artery though. Uh, this nerve is on the anterior surface of the anterior scalene muscle. It looks like it's running back to between the two scalene muscles. So um, this is going to be the phrenic nerve, right? And the one on the artery is going to be the vagus nerve. Look, there's the, the cut end of the internal jugular vein. So imagine my finger's the internal jugular vein. That nerve in there is running with the internal jugular vein and the common carotid artery, so that's going to be the vagus. But what we can do now is we can dissect. Actually, we can see the same on the, on the other side. All right. Um, and let's take the lungs out. The other thing about the phrenic nerve is that the phrenic nerve, sure, it innervates the diaphragm. It's motor to the diaphragm. It's sensory from the diaphragm, you know, like muscle stretch and that sort of thing. It's sensory from um, relative um, pleura. It's also sensory from the pericardium covering the heart. So when the phrenic nerve enters the chest, it's going to dive straight down to the heart and it's going to go in the pericardium around the heart to get to the diaphragm. So the heart is anterior to the, the, the esophagus, right? So the phrenic nerve is going to be running down here but I said the vagus nerve is going to go to the esophagus. We can see the esophagus there. We can see a nerve running with the esophagus. That's going to be the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve here is posterior. So here we've got the hilum of the lung. We've got the blood vessels and the airways going to and from the lung. So if the phrenic nerve is running to the pericardium of the heart, that means the phrenic nerve is going to be anterior to the hilum of the lung. Whereas if the vagus nerve is going to run to the esophagus, then the vagus nerve is going to run posterior to the hilum of the lung. I don't know if that's a useful thing to remember or not, um, but with the vagus nerve, remember, it's going to go and find the esophagus. So it's going to go into the chest and then go and find the esophagus. And that's what we're seeing here. So on the left hand side, the vagus nerve is going to run around the arch of the aorta and go to the esophagus and follow the esophagus down. Um, it's going to run around the right subclavian artery and then run down to the esophagus and run down into the, into the abdomen. And if you're thinking, but yes, I also know the vagus nerve is going to send fibres to the heart of the lung. Well, what, look where that puts it. Look where it, look, look, just look and see where the vagus runs. Because um, the pulmonary and cardiac plexuses are essentially around the great vessels, posterior to the great vessel. That path puts the vagus nerve in the right place to send fibres to the heart and to the lungs. Right? How's that? So that's what I always do when a student asks me, is it the vagus or the phrenic? I remember the vagus nerve is going to run 
with the common carotid artery and the internal jugular vein. And then when it goes into the chest, it's going to need to get to the esophagus because that's how it's going to get down to the abdomen. And the phrenic nerve, I remember, it's coming out of the, of the uh, cervical spinal cord. So it starts lower down. And I remember it's on the anterior surface of the anterior scalene muscle. And I remember that it innervates the pericardium. So I know that it's got to run in the pericardium to get down to the diaphragm. And that's how I figure out which is which. I look to see where the nerve is going and see where it comes from. And yes, we've got a lot of different models and we can't always see everything, but we can use those basic ideas to figure it out. Um, I just thought I'd describe it because I get asked it so often and they are two really important nerves. All right, um, speak to you next week.